Today's show is all about French meringue. We're going to be making orange curd filled pavlova, chocolate jacquois with coffee, buttercream, and a pink angel food cake. And visiting with us today are three students from the Cambridge School of Culinary Arts. Which one is Adelaide? Right here. Hi, Adelaide. Hi. Nice to see you. And we have Chadwick. Hi, Chadwick. Hi, Martha. And we have Suzanne. Hi. Hi. And as a surprise guest, we have a lovely little nine-year-old girl Hi. who is a budding pastry chef. She is the daughter of Jeffrey Zakarian, and her name is? Madeline. Madeline. I'm so happy you dropped by. <laughs> And she did not expect to be in the show, but uh, since she's here and really proficient in baking, I thought it would be great for you to learn all about French meringue. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <laughs> One of my favorite go-to desserts, so easy to make, are pavlovas, pillowy meringues that you can fill with curds or fruits, whipped creams, ice creams. And I learned how to make this version of the pavlova from Jeffrey Rush, the famous movie actor who learned it as a student in Australia. There's French meringue, Italian meringue, and Swiss meringue, and it really has to do with how the sugar is added to the egg white. And French meringue is by far the simplest. Uh, we're using one cup plus two tablespoons of caster sugar, which is super fine. Touch that, touch how fine it sees. Hardly, hardly a grain. And so why do you use super fine sugar instead of... Ripe? Well, it's on the verge of being powdered sugar, but uh, it still has a grain to it, but so fine that it dissolves very quickly in the moisture of the egg white. So we're adding four large egg whites to our stand mixer, fitted with a wire whisk, this, as opposed to the flat beater, right? Madeline knows everything. <laughs> and we have a pinch of salt that goes into the egg whites. And turn this on. Start beating this to a little bit of a froth before you start adding the sugar. Is there a difference if you use room temperature egg whites versus egg whites straight from the refrigerator? Oh, well, you should use room temperature. It makes a big difference in the volume, and you should use the freshest, freshest egg whites possible. The older the egg whites, it won't get the volume that the fresh egg whites get. So now just start adding the sugar in a very, very thin stream, slowly. So there, we've gotten all the super fine sugar into the beautiful egg whites. Now you can add two teaspoons of vinegar which helps the shininess of the meringue, and a teaspoon of vanilla. Would this be another good time to add additional flavorings if you didn't want to use vanilla? Yeah, you could add something else if you wanted an almond-flavored meringue, but I just think it's so terrific to be vanilla-flavored. And one teaspoon of cornstarch. It helps with the dryness of the meringue, helps it dry out faster. I think we have our French meringue. That took just a few minutes. Yeah. Would you like to taste? Do you taste after when you make yes. things? I always like I always like to taste. You need to know how it's gonna taste. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. I think it's important. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No graininess mm -hmm. at all. No, it's very smooth. And I have a pastry bag fitted with a half inch round tip. And do you always pipe your pavlovas instead of a, like a scoop or anything? No, you can spoon them. You can make them whatever shape you want. We, we just want to make similar sizes. We want uh, the desserts to all look pretty much the same. So here we have our beautiful bag of meringue. And I want to make them all the same size, so I'm using a biscuit cutter. This is like a two and a half inch biscuit cutter. Tracing that onto the paper. Don't don't put your meringue right on the pencil. Turn it over. You can still see, and it's just healthier. Make a nice mound like that. I love using pastry bags. <laughs> the cleanup is so much easier. Oh, it's so easy. And I always squeeze with one hand and direct with the other hand. Right? Mm-hmm. There. Now you can use a spoon and just make a little indentation like that. And why? Because I want to have a place to put my orange curd. So Madeline, you are our youngest student on this <laughs> baking show. It's really nice to have you. 
So now these are going to go into a 300 degree oven. Immediately turn the heat down to 250 and put your timer on for 30 minutes. And then let it stay in the oven until the oven cools off. Now if you choose to uh, fill your pavlovas with orange curd and serve it with a big dollop of whipped cream, uh, make the orange curd while the pavlovas are baking. It has to be very cool before you uh, use it in the pavlova. Now we'll need the zest of two oranges and use a wood rasp like this. I like the bent ones because it holds the zest so nicely and you don't, you don't make any mess whatsoever. <laughs> it's so nice. So zest of two oranges right into your pot. Uh, half a cup plus two tablespoons of freshly squeezed orange juice. And by the way, if you're going to um, squeeze the orange and you need to zest, always zest it first because it's very hard to zest a half of a, <laughs> a half of a squeezed orange. It just doesn't work so well. And five tablespoons of freshly squeezed lemon juice. A nice citrusy flavor. Uh, we have 12 large egg yolks. And it's a good thing to serve curd with the pavlovas because you have all those yolks left over. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt and uh, one and a half cups of granulated sugar. The little specks you see in the sugar are just vanilla beans that are sitting in here. And all of this butter, we need one and a quarter cups of butter plus one tablespoon. Mix this all up a little bit before you put it on the stove. Break up those egg yolks. And just keep stirring while it's on the stove. Don't walk away. Don't go <laughs> chatting with your neighbor, okay? <laughs> okay, I think this is getting there. See how the bubbles are just coming around the edge? There. One pot wonder. <laughs> and so at this point, you're straining out the zest and any... Like, well, it's not the know? zest as much as uh, any impurities in the eggs. Okay. And then cover this. I always put the plastic wrap right on the surface of the curd. Martha, why would you put the film on the curd and not just on the bowl? You might get a little bit of a skin, but it'll come right off. Put this into the refrigerator, and then uh, when that's cool, your meringues are cool, uh, you're ready to assemble your beautiful pavlova dessert. So top your lovely meringue with some delicious orange curd a dollop of whipped cream, and a segment or two of orange. So beautiful. If you have some fresh mint, a sprig would be pretty. But this is a very elegant, simple, and beautiful dessert. I think you're going to love it. Serve it to your friends, they'll love it too. Enjoy. Would you like a taste? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. One for our youngest student. <laughs> there. What do you think? Yum. <laughs> Yum. <laughs> and now we're using French meringue yet again to make a chocolate dacquoise. Start by getting the pans ready. We are tracing a 10 inch pan on a piece of parchment paper. This will be the size of our dacquoise. So I now turn this over so you don't get any of the pencil on your meringue. And these are flat sheets. They're very nice for baking big flat cakes like this. So we're going to sift one and a half cups of confectioner sugar with third of a cup of cocoa powder. Might take all day. <laughs> Lots of lumps in this stuff. But uh, now, um, six large egg whites. Now you're going to have to make this recipe twice to make a four layer dacquoise cake. So we already made these two. This is what they look like. And uh, start, break up the eggs first. You need an eighth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. We're using cream of tartar instead of vinegar in this particular recipe. So break up your eggs and we need three quarters of a cup of sugar. And this happens to be granulated sugar. Why do you add the sugar slowly into the egg whites? Well, if you dump it all in, it takes a little, you know, it puts more pressure on the egg whites. Wouldn't you rather be buried by a fine stream of sand than a great <laughs> big dump, dump load? I always try to put it in human terms. <laughs> so this looks very beautiful. Yes, stiff peaks. 
Now this dessert, these have to be in the oven for two hours. Wow. wow. Okay, and they have to stay in the oven for a couple hours after they're in the uh, hot oven for just to dry out completely. Now you're going to whisk your dry ingredients into your egg whites. So sprinkle a little bit of the cocoa confectioner's sugar into your egg white, your French meringue. And you see how easy it is to whip with the whisk? You could also do little individuals. You oh, you certainly could. Oh, yes. And then you only have to make one batch of this. You probably could make at least six or eight small dequas. So now that I fold in all the dry ingredients, I am going to make disc number one. And preheat your oven at this point to 250 degrees. And uh, starting in the center of your circle, pipe a beautiful spiral. Can you make different shapes with... Um... Oh, you could do a heart-shaped equoise, or a loaf-shaped equoise, or a square equoise. We started off making this cake when we were testing it, made it into a big square, but it just didn't look as pretty as the round. Yeah, I think the round looks prettier. <laughs> so there, that's a very nice spiral. Get that into the 250 degree oven for two hours and check every now and then. Now, would you like to see how to assemble this beautiful dequoise? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, I'm just making the ganache and I have one cup of heavy cream already boiled and eight ounces of milk chocolate, a creamy ganache. It's best if you just let them sit in the hot cream and mm -hmm. then whisk. Um, we have one already made so we can use it. Now we can take our first layer. Now do you see why you wanted uh, layers to be a similar size? And I like using a, a cardboard underneath just because it'll make it much easier to transport, lift, whatever. And you can just use a little tiny bit of the ganache on your turntable to hold it. Now, half of this on the bottom layer. And you're using milk chocolate, but if I wanted to incorporate dark chocolate instead, there oh, of course, would be just I'd... as delicious. Oh, of course. Well, not to me. I like milk chocolate ah. the best. <laughs> I'm making this for me. <laughs> <laughs> now we can put our next layer on, and here we're going to get a layer of buttercream. Ooh. Now the buttercream I have. I was just waiting for three tablespoons of espresso powder to dissolve in a quarter of a cup of warm water, mm -hmm. and I'm going to mix that right in to our lovely, fluffy Swiss meringue buttercream. Just beat that espresso into your buttercream. So use about a cup and a half of the buttercream. And I'm using different sized spatulas to spread. <gasps> this is so good. <laughs> Chocolate and That's coffee. Amazing. That's mm. the best combination. Now put on our next layer, number three, and the rest of the milk chocolate ganache. Mm, so good. <laughs> <laughs> and these really stay together very nicely, the layers. And you do chill this, and it is better the next day. Now our fourth layer of meringue goes on. We're going to turn this upside down like that and coat the entire thing. We want to do a crumb coat first. Do you know what a crumb coat is? Yes. <laughs> so far, I haven't stumped you at <laughs> all. A crumb coat is a coating just to cover all the imperfections. And if there are any crumbs, to cover the crumbs. And then you're going to put this right into the cold refrigerator, and we will show you the final decoration. And now the top coat will go on. And I think we have just enough frosting left out of that gigantic bowl. <laughs> so this frosting was made with 10 egg whites in the Swiss meringue style, so it's a lot. Do the sides first. And the sides don't have to be perfect because we are going to coat them with finely chopped toasted hazelnuts. Mm. I saved a little bit, about, I'd say maybe 3 quarters of a cup of frosting, to do a little embellishment on the cake. If you didn't want to do nuts on the outside, what else would you suggest? Well, nothing. Nothing? It's pretty without anything. Mm. Arthur, what was the first cake that you ever made? 
Um, first cake I ever, ever made in my entire life? <laughs> or first cake I ever sold? First cake you ever sold. Oh, a wedding cake on a 110 degree day. <gasps> Make a wedding cake in an <laughs> unair conditioned beach club. Oh my God. Oh my. That was difficult. So now coat the sides with your nuts. Don't chop the nuts in the food processor. The food processor just pulverize them too much. It makes them oily or, you know, if you leave them in too long. It's five ounces of hazelnuts that you toast on a piece of parchment in the oven until they're a nutty brown. And if you're not a very good froster, you could coat the entire cake with nuts. Mm -hmm. And I think it looks pretty. In fact, I've never had a cake that's completely covered with nuts like this. Okay, so now... Transfer the cake to your serving tray, and I decided to use this beautiful silver tray. So, we can take this away. And you could do a pretty little dot all around the bottom. If you have a tiny little hand vacuum, it would be very helpful <laughs> to pick up the nuts. This stunning cake is a must-bake for those of you who love meringue, nuts, buttercream, chocolate, mocha, try it, you'll love it. Enjoy. It wasn't until the 1860s that angel food cakes became popular in America. Today we're going to show you how to make a pink angel food cake for a little girl's birthday or just to munch on with strawberries and cream. You need an anodized aluminum angel food cake pan with this large center tube and these little feet. This allows you to cool the cake upside down uh, there's no buttering, no greasing, no flouring, no lining the cake pan. The anodized aluminum allows the cake to climb right up the sides. Now, I'm going to start beating 14 large egg whites. While the egg whites are getting a little bit foamy, I am going to sift the dry ingredients. Three quarters of a cup of castor sugar and a cup of cake flour. These dry ingredients, by the way, sift four times. Should you oh. definitely use cake flour? Do you definitely use cake flour? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's lighter than the all-purpose flour. And just dump that back in, sift again. And it's easy to do with a sieve like this. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, the cake flour um, that you want to find in the store is not self-rising. Okay. Mm, okay. You don't want to have extra leavening in your, in your flour. The eggs are starting to get frothy. Add to the eggs a half a teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of cream of tartar. We want to add the cream of tartar for a little bit of stabilization. Mm -hmm. And one tablespoon of warm water helps break up the albumin in the egg whites. Now it's time to add three quarters of a cup of super fine or castor sugar and just add it in a very slow stream. We have some fresh, beautiful California strawberries. Could you just uh, hull them and slice them into maybe four slices lengthwise, okay? And put them into here. Do what you can. So I'm going to add four drops of rose food dye. And now you can add almost stiff peaks. Add two teaspoons of vanilla. Oh, all well done. Thank you. We could add a little bit of sugar to our berries. So I'm going to add like a quarter of a cup, the castor sugar to the berries. And just let them macerate a little bit. They'll be pretty on the pink angel food cake. There. Okay. We are ready to rock and roll. So this bowl is a little confining for the folding in of the dry ingredients. Mm -hmm. So I suggest putting it right into uh, the large sifting bowl. Mm, so gorgeous. It looks like pink froth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you don't really associate French meringue with angel food cake, which is so American. This looks so good, guys. It does. It does. <laughs> <laughs> so just fold your dry ingredients in. 
folding is taking the bottom of the bowl up over the dry ingredients or what you're folding into. And keep turning the bowl at the same time because what you really want to do is make sure all the meringue gets all of the flour and sugar. So this has two batches of sugar in it, into the meringue itself and in the batter. And you see it's not deflating at all. No. Mm -hmm. And uh, we now fill our anodized aluminum angel food cake pan. So plop it down all the way around. Actually, I like the pink. It's so pretty. And you could probably experiment and get colors from fruits and vegetables. Okay, so just make sure you even this out. Preheat your oven to 350 degrees. It's very important to draw a spatula like this through the batter just to knock out any air pockets. And then smooth your top again. And by the way, the color intensifies as it bakes, so don't make the batter too deep a color. Okay, right into the oven for 35 to 40 minutes. Set your timer. So the cake is completely cooled upside down. Angel food cake is so light that you uh, really want to make sure that it doesn't collapse onto itself by cooling it right side up. If your pan does not have these little feet, you can just invert this, the tube, on the neck of a wine bottle and it will cool very nicely. So I like to go around the sides of the pan to loosen it from the outer ring. And I am going to lift this out. Now look how pretty. It's beautiful. It is beautiful. And now you have to loosen the bottom too. So take that same spatula or narrow sharp knife and loosen around the base. And invert this. Oh, look, it's coming perfectly. So that's pretty. This is prettier. So I like to serve this cake with strawberries that are macerated in sugar and lemon juice and slightly sweetened sour cream. To the sour cream, one teaspoon of vanilla. My mother always made vanilla sour cream to serve her fruit pierogi. Wow. She would make peach or plum or apricot pierogi. And uh, oh, just a tablespoon or two or three of confectioner's sugar in your sour cream. Now, how do you cut an angel food cake? There's this contraption known as an angel food cake comb, which if the angel food cake is very dry, goes right through the cake, kind of collapses a little bit. My favorite method is just to use two forks back to back and pull the cake apart like that. And you want the slices to be a little bit rough, like a torn slice. And you have this beautiful pink. Wow cake right on and be generous because it's light as air it's, cake. it's air it's all air i think you'll love the texture the taste and the look of this beautiful cake thank you so much for watching i hope you learned a lot about french meringue and thank you students for attending and to our special visitor thank you very much madeline for coming Welcome. You've been a great student, don't you think, students? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. See you next time on Martha Bakes. Bring your sugar and water to a boil, swirling the pan to dissolve the sugar. Washing down the sides of the pan with a wet pastry brush will help prevent crystals from forming. Let the mixture boil until it reaches 238 degrees. Meanwhile, whisk your egg whites until foamy. Add a pinch of cream of tartar and salt. Slowly pour the hot sugar syrup down the sides of the bowl. Mix until stiff, glossy peaks are formed.